I'm really excited to show you this dimensional slice and smudge. It is absolutely gorgeous with a two row install as well. What I started out doing, and this is kind of a game changer um, as far as it being even on both sides, is I just went ahead and zigzagged that part. So it's going to give you some diffusion to start with. But really, the simplicity of this technique is going to absolutely blow your mind. So really, first things first is I am just going to split the hair sort of down the middle in the back um, and then just going to pin some of this clip pin. What year is it? I'm going to clip some of this hair out of the way, just this side of the head, just to keep it just to keep it a little bit cleaner. Now, obviously, she's a mannequin and she's already light and I want her to be like a level nine ish. So and right now she's an eight. So this is not really I want you to pay more attention to the placement than anything. And this is almost like a reverse slice and smudge because she's going to be going darker in between. So I'm just going to take a big slice and I'm going to go in with my lightener. I'm using the Magix 10 lift nine um, and I'm going to be going in and just taking really thick slices like almost almost like, you know what I mean? Just like a wow factor. So really what I'm doing here is I'm starting out with just a slice around the face. Now on the opposite side of the head, I realized that I can just have done one big slice around the face and I didn't have to actually break it up into two like I'm doing here. So um, I did change that on the other side. I will always saturate the underneath of the section first, especially when I'm using such thick slices. And normally if it's a real client, I don't get it on their face, but hey, what are you gonna do? Honestly, we used very few foils here. These are the from our Big Papa ones. And um, yeah, these are the from our Big Papas. Now, I would go ahead and say that I mix my lightener thicker than most. So I do like it a little on the thicker side, but not so thick that it is going to thin out. Probably like a, not so much like icing, more like, hmm, sour cream. I don't even know if that's like a good, maybe not sour cream. I don't freaking know. Confectioner's icing. <laughs> See, and then I take another big slice here and I saturate the underneath first. Now I'm just gonna gently pivot around the head, pin some hair out of the way. So I'm kind of working around like a pizza pie and I'm taking another thick slice. Saturate the underneath first. I should have been using a bigger paintbrush to be honest with you. That is like really the one area where I could have saved a massive amount of time. Saturate really well, pop that foil into place. It is, if you're not used to taking sections this wide, it's gonna take you a minute to really get used to laying that foil down. And yes, that is gonna take you more time than doing a traditional foil, but you're doing so many less foils that you end up saving a shit ton of time anyway. Shit ton is my favorite measurement. You know that already. Okay, now best the best bet when you have a section that thick is just to take another foil and overlay it like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my next section. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of a better view of what exactly I'm doing and like where that's gonna lay on the head. As you could see, I smartened up and I'm using a bigger paintbrush now. So this is the Fermar Power Painter. And I'm saturating really well because these sections are so thick. You want to make sure that you really, really pack that lightener on. Yes, you use a lot of product and yes, you should charge accordingly, but it makes all the difference. Now I want you to really, really pay attention here to how I adjust the foil once I lay it down because it's not going to lay right. So you have to take a second to just like pop it into place the way that you need it to be. Make sure all that other hair is out of the way. So I will like go ahead and I'll adjust it and kind of get that foil shaped with the head. So I almost want it to like wrap around the head a little bit and it's just going to take a little bit of maneuvering. And again, I'm really laying it on there. 
saturating really, really well. No feathering up. There's no reason to do that. We are going to do a root smudge and it's going to blend it out perfectly, okay? Now moving on to the next section, we are going to be going in. We are going to be painting really well again. I'm just laying it down the opposite way, shifting it with the shape of the head. And same thing, I know that you can't really see from this camera angle what I'm doing and I'll move it shortly, but I just kind of wanted to give you this top of the head view so that you could see it really well. Kind of like where I'm placing the foil. And I'll do a head sheet, so don't worry about that. You definitely want to be gentle about this when you shift it back. Okay. Now I just went ahead and flipped it around for you, and I'm going in, see I ended up on this side of the head, just taking a thicker slice. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that down. Now, you're gonna have to maneuver your body with this, right? So you are going to take that power painter, you are going to pop your hand underneath and use your hand really as a board. As far as I know, besides, with, besides a cutting board, they really don't make them this thick. So I think it's a really, <laughs> really pretty important. And this is a really great angle for you to also see what I'm doing. And sort of the shape that I'm following around the head. Saturation, take that big foil, pop it underneath and lay it on thick. See what I do with my hand there? Where I make sure that the foil is kind of like with the shape of the head. And then following that same pattern, I just do two more foils right in the back of the head. So really your next two slices are just gonna be right like that. And then we have to go in between those slices and we are going to use a different color. So really because I'm using Magix 10 and it processes so quickly, I really waited until I was about 15 minutes out to start applying this color in between. So in between the foils now, I'm doing 6.71, which is like a sort of matte ash color. It does have a little bit of warmth to it though. So it, it, it creates, it's really like a nice neutral. It ends up being pretty neutral, but I like it. It's kind of like a flat color, but it's, it's gorgeous, especially with the ashy look that we're going for here. Because I would, really wouldn't want to create like a warm brown and then have just like ashy highlights next to it. So I'm just going in with my big paintbrush and I'm really just saturating all of that hair in between. And I take, a, I, I take a wet brush and I comb it through and then I ruin my wet brush. But that's just what I choose to do. You don't have to do that. There's other brushes like the eye blend brush that you can use to comb it through. And you just want to make sure that you're saturating really well in the process. So I do that, I go in, and then when I do my rinse, now this is pretty important because you don't want to get the dark color on the blonde. So when you go and you rinse, go in between the foils. So go in and rinse it out with the, with the like uh, lukewarm water, basically, and then take your foils out and rinse those out. And then we're going to do a root smudge and tone. So right now I'm just saturating the best I can. Since we are doing a root smudge, I don't have to be super meticulous at the roots here. Like it's okay if they're a little bit splotchy. Really, I'm making sure my ends are saturated. So ends and mids are going to be your primary concerns right now. And then this is what it looks like when it is all washed out. So we're gonna go in and do the root smudge. And for the root smudge, I, I did a level six neutral. So just 6.0. And I'm just going in and I'm applying that really like a retouch, maybe bringing it just a little bit further down. Uh, my extensions are pretty rooted too. So, and they're about a level six fading into that same color. Um, so I just want to match that to the best of my ability. Now here I am using Magix 10, which processes really, really quickly. Um, and I'm just working on a diagonal. It's just going to help break it up a little bit. And I'm just, yeah, I'm just doing my smudge. I'm bringing it down about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. So it's like a super grown out retouch. And I'm using the zero time system brush. It's just faster. It's bigger. It's faster. It curves with the head. 
And then what I mixed up for the toner was a nine sand, which is yellow, yellow, green, which sounds really weird, but it's actually a really gorgeous color. And I mixed it with nine one. We did want an ashy look, but I do want it to have some glow and some sheen to it, which is why that yellow is really going to come in handy. And I just did equal parts of that. Now this is going to process so fast. So the root color is going to process in 10 minutes. And I just mixed it with fix, which is, um, their demi developer. So it just turned, but you need it to be alkaline so it does not fade out on you. So I didn't add any morph to it to make it acidic. Now, after I do this, then I'm going to go in with my toner, which that's only going to take about five to six minutes to process really. Um, and I'm, I'm, I mixed that with fix as well, but I did add morph to that to make it more acidic. It's just going to bring that hair back to the pH level where you want it to be. All right, so <clears throat> I am going to use the wet brush as well to sort of like marry these together and it's going to create the most beautiful, perfect blend in the whole wide world. It really is. And I'll a little bit use my fingers to sort of blend it together as well. And I'm really not being forceful with the brush at all because I don't want to really intentionally drag down the root smudge. So I'm not like pulling it very hard. I'm just doing a very, very gentle blend. So that process took about an hour and 15 minutes and then the extension install uh, was another 10 minutes on top of that. So, and, and, you know, I styled, so maybe an hour and 45 minutes start to finish with the extensions. Um, the installation that I'm going to be using here is I, I did two rows, just these are two minis and I just kind of brick laid them. So it's just your basic brick lay placement, one right really above the occipital and one really right above that. So there's the first row. See all those little hairs that were there get, they get out of the way. Very easy to move out of the way. And this is the finished result uh, with both rows. So the other one just lays right on top of that one.